This video is loosely inspired by a tweet storm by Chris Dixon. If you don't already know, Chris Dixon is a general partner at Andreessen Horowitz, one of the most active venture capital firms in the blockchain space. He has over 800,000 followers on Twitter and is well known for his in-depth analysis on the future of Web3 technology. Nowadays, many people are looking into Web3 versions of Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So let's explore what Web3 is and understand why it matters. If you're new here, this video has been made by Alex, voiced by me, Joelle. And on Eat the Block, we help you to transition into Web3. Our story begins with Web1 from 1990 to early 2000s. At this time, the internet was just getting started, and it was all about open protocols such as HTTP and IP that were decentralized and community governed. This enabled most of the value to go to the edges of the network, to the users and the builders. Then a second step was Web 2 from early 2000s to 2020. The situation has changed. We saw the emergence of services that were siloed, centralized, and run by corporations. Now, most of the value, instead of going to users and builders, was going to a handful of companies like Google, Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. The big tech companies had taken control of large chunks of the internet and were extracting as much value as they could. But hopefully, this is about to change. We are now at a very exciting time, which is the beginning of the Web3 era. Web3 is a combination of the decentralized, community-governed players of Web1 with the advanced modern functionalities of Web2. Web3 is the internet owned by the builders and users, orchestrated with tokens. Web3 is going to help us to solve issues with centralization, or at least a major part of it. So what's the problem with centralization? Centralized platforms follow a predictable life cycle. At first, their goal is to recruit users. For example, a platform like Facebook only makes sense if it has a lot of users. What happens is that after having attracted a large number of users, the platform hits the top of an S-curve. Its growth slows down. It enters a new phase where the platform is going to extract data from its users and monetize it. It'll also start fiercely competing against other platforms that were previously their partners. Their partners are also developers, creators, and businesses, which face a similar S-curve growth. Over time, they've learned that building on top of centralized platforms is risky. Once these centralized platforms conclude that you're a liability to them, they will try to remove you from their system. Some famous examples of such cases include Microsoft vs. Netscape, Google vs. Yelp, Facebook vs. Zynga, and Epic vs. Apple. On the other hand, Web3 is different because its ownership and control are decentralized. Everyone, including you and me, can own pieces of the platforms or internet services by owning tokens, whether it's NFTs or fungible tokens. For example, let's say we have a Web3 version of YouTube. You can easily be a part of the system by either owning their tokens or building content on top of the platform. Tokens give property rights to its owners. For example, owning an NFT which can be a piece of art, photos, music, text, game objects, etc. gives users the ownership of these assets. This is all made possible by blockchains. Blockchains are special computers that anyone can access, but that no one can control entirely or monopolize. Ethereum is currently the most valuable Web3 network, which is powered by Ethers, its native currency for transactions. The growth of this network depends on the quality of the applications and the amount of users that use the network. For example, Uniswap is a decentralized exchange, which allows its users to swap tokens with other users. And because it's decentralized, both you and me can be a part of this system by either owning its token or providing liquidity in the system for users to trade. This fixes the core problem of centralized networks that we previously discussed, where instead, the value is accumulated by one entity, and it ends up fighting its own users and partners. Before Web3, users and builders had to choose between the limited functionality of Web1 or the corporate centralized model of Web2. Web3 offers a new way that combines the best aspects of the previous eras. This is potentially a revolution. We're still very early in this movement, and it's a great time to get involved. So now that you understand the value of Web3, how do you plan to get involved? Let us know in the comments. Bye!